post the agenda link. And then deep link to this. Let's see, there we go. So if anyone's new today, uh, please sign in to our agenda that that's where we track attendance, stuff like that. Uh, and you'll also get uh, to see the agenda for today. Follow along. Once I get a couple more folks on that list, I'll go ahead and start kicking off um, check-ins from everybody. Anybody new today? I'm new. <laughs> hey, Craig. <laughs> Great to meet you. You as well. I'm new as well. Let me... I'm new as well. <clears throat> Hi, Xavier. Great to meet you. I'm Dan. I'm also new. This is Carlos. Hi, Carlos. I'm new as well. Peter Benjamin. Hey. Great to meet you, Peter. Hi, I'm Lutz. I'm new as well. Great. Hi, Lutz. But a two more seconds and we'll kick off. Meeting, not a working session. Wonderful. So uh, Sarah Allen uh, had an appointment and uh, she'll be joining us uh, momentarily, one of my co-chairs. Um, I think I've been um, out and, you know, for the last couple of sessions and fortunately I wasn't able to make it to uh, Barcelona uh, to our uh, sessions where um, I imagine uh, we met many of you. So um, I'm uh, sorry I missed that. Uh, I've been uh, uh, tied up with the, um, with some work stuff at, at PayPal, and I'm actually uh, in Amsterdam right now for um, you know kind of the antithesis of a uh, developer event uh, at an event called um, Money 2020, um, which is like all bankers and financial services folks, uh, you know, looking at. Uh, how we bring a developer event to uh, the North America ed edition that's coming up in October. So, um, you know, we, we've been uh, hard at work at, uh, uh, you know, landing the, um, you know, landing the SIG and, uh, you know, we, we, we uh, for the over, over the past week, we, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're formally confirmed the, uh, um, CNCF TOC uh, ratified our uh, transition from the safe working group. You know, we've been operating as uh, an independent working group with the intent to uh, establish a uh, a working a formal working group in, inside of the CNCF for nearly a, a year and a half. And uh, you know, we, we um, were just ratified as. Uh, SIG security. So if you hear us talking about um, SAFE or the SAFE working group, uh, they're one and the same, but uh, uh, when we when we formalized in um, the CNCF, um, the uh, the TOC decided to, to shift uh, from the uh, working group moniker to SIGs and um, you know, we, we decided that the, um, you know, secure access for everyone um, acronym was uh, a little bit too confusing and 
uh, went with the, you know, the simple, um, you know, more recognizable single uh, English word with, with the um, uh, security. So that's me. Uh, I'll uh, I'll go around the room. Uh, I'm going to go down the, the list uh, on uh, the meeting notes. If you're just joining us and uh, um, haven't seen it, uh, you know, send me send me a, a chat message. I'll send you the uh, the link to the meeting notes. Um, Carlos, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, nice to meet you guys. My name is Carlos Vicencio. I'm working as a security researcher for Intel. So I'm here to collaborate and try to understand a little bit uh, more in depth uh, what is the purpose of the, uh, this community. Thanks. Great. Welcome. Peter? Uh, yes, my name is Peter Benjamin. I am a uh, software engineer with about seven years of uh, security experience. Um, previously worked as a you know, pen tester, Red Hat, um, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, uh, Red Team, uh, uh, Red Teamer. Um, uh, anyway, so uh, currently at Teradata and uh, looking forward to contribute to SIG Security. Awesome. Emily? I am Emily Fox. I'm, I work at the National Security Agency as a developer security lead. Um, part of this group to provide my experience on uh, security governance for technology systems and projects. Awesome. Justin? Capos? <laughs> I think you're muted, Justin. Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm Justin Capos. I'm a professor at NYU, and um, some of my quick updates this week are that uh, Uptain is, which is a tough uh, variant for automotive, is nearing um, its uh, standardization by IEEE ISTO, and we're actually thinking about migrating it um, in the future over to somewhere in the Linux Foundation. So I actually have a call later today to talk about that. Um, we've on the Intoto side, responded to the Intoto uh, feedback and process. So I think we're just waiting on Sarah Allen um, or others from that group to uh, just actually put the documents in the repository and then we're done. Uh, from the OPA security assessment side, the uh, OPA folks have been provided their feedback and my understanding is, is that uh, they just need to respond to it and then uh, we added in the repo and they're done as well. So we're almost done with the first two assessments, which means I'm going to be tapping people on the shoulder for the upcoming ones. Nice, nice. Fantastic. Thank you, Justin. Craig? Hi, uh, my name is Craig Ingram. I'm a software engineer at Heroku, which is part of Salesforce. Uh, my background, uh, kind of similar to Peter, my background's in uh, security, pen testing, and things like that, and I'm doing software engineering stuff. Uh, I'm also part of the uh, Kubernetes Security Audit Working Group. Um, and so interested in the overlap there with, with the SIG and if I can provide any updates and things like that and uh, participating more here as well. Brilliant. Welcome. Michael? Hey there. My name is Michael Hausenblast and I'm a developer advocate at AWS where I'm looking after container security. Great. Welcome, Michael. Uh, Xavier, Xavier? Xavier, yeah. Xavier, um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I work for uh, I worked for Heptio, now part of VMware. Um, I'm a systems engineer there. Uh, some background in data engineering and a little bit of application security. Great, welcome, Joshua. Um, <clears throat> I'm in the open source group at VMware. I'm working on uh, security related projects. Uh, but Histories in open source distribution building, uh, Linux distros. Great. Um, are either you uh, affiliated directly with Joe Beta? Just a sign and check there. A little bit, yeah. The sponsors of, uh, of uh, the SIG. Uh, just want to you know uh, identify any affiliation uh, to our uh, sponsors. Uh, yeah, I'm not. <clears throat> okay. Well, cool. I, work, I work with Joe a fair bit, so. Do you have a but no reporting structure? 
I'm underneath him like a level or two. Yeah. Got it. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Lutz. Hi, my name is Lutz Binke. I work for Figo, which is a uh, financial services startup. I'm a platform engineer, and uh, because I've been working for a public uh, CA many, many moons ago, I'm charged with security. Um, I um, was uh, not quickly enough leaving the room, so I volunteered for doing a um, um, security use case of uh, Figo. Um, and I'm uh, at the moment putting together all the information that I'm allowed to share, that I want to share, that I think uh, that are um, of uh, in, um, interest to the group. And so I'm, I'm listening in to see what people are interested in. Great. Welcome. Leonardo? Hello, I'm Leo. I'm one of the new engineers that work on CNCF project Falco, Falco Security. And I'm here clearly because it relates a bit to security. So looking forward to contribute to the SIG group. Great, welcome. Daniel? Uh, hi, my name is Daniel Zirov. I'm a security engineer in, at Adevinta. Um, we are using a lot of uh, CNCF tools. So I thought maybe it would be a good opportunity for me to contribute a little bit for security assessments or, or anything. Uh, my background is uh, defensive security and pen testing. Great. Brendan. Hi, I'm Brendan. I'm from IBM Research. I work mainly on um, the security stuff related to container isolation, um, supply chain management, container encryption, and so on. Um, just a quick status update. Um, I was going through the the issues of the um, the outstanding unable issues in the CNCF SIG group, and um, I kind of classified them into a couple categories. Hopefully, if we have time, we can go through some of that. Nice. Karthik. Hey folks, <clears throat> my name is Karthik. Um, I work as a developer advocate uh, on Oracle Cloud. Um, I came from the Oracle Kubernetes engine team and basically like um, was in charge of like the testing and security side of things. So interested in that space. So I'm here to help out however I can. Great. Robert? Hi, Robert Fikaya. I'm working with uh, Stira on the OPA project. And uh, by way of update, I've just been reviewing the issues and pull requests and commenting as appropriate. Thank you. Lorenzo? Hey, I'm Lorenzo Fontana. I'm part of the open source group at SysDig and I'm currently focused on Falco, um, the sensor project. And we have been focused now in working on doing the assessment and like seeing what is happening in the assessment. And that's basically my update. Great. Michael? Uh, do you see? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm also on the open source team here at SysDig, um, one of the leads for the Falco project. Uh, in addition to kind of getting ready for our security assessment and the security audit we have kicking off in a couple weeks, um, we've kind of just been spending some time around uh, rethinking about how we re-architecture, re-architect Falco um, to try and add in some performance improvements. Uh, we have a summer of code intern that's work that's focused on performance improvements that the CNCF sponsored. So um, a lot of work going into that uh, over the summer. Great. Uh, Justin Cormack. I'm a security engineer at Docker and a notary maintainer. I have been working with Sarah on the Intoto assessment, but I missed, I was away last week and I missed the working session. So I need to catch up with Sarah and work out. I think we're, I think as, as Justin said, it's done basically, so. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, Tzvi? Uh, hi, I'm Tzvi Korn, uh, Aqua. And uh, I actually uh, participated a little bit uh, a couple of months ago with the, the SAFE group and uh, 
now I have a little bit more time to invest with the, the SIG group. We find ourselves uh, needing to do a lot more security assessments for, uh, for Kubernetes. Uh, so uh, um, just here to, uh, to understand, you know, what, uh, what hooks we can, we can use in order to, uh, to make sure that we give the right information for uh, enterprise users. Great. You know, having sold uh, security products uh, before, nothing like a vulnerability to, to uh, get the interest of the market. Right? <laughs> Wonderful. Um, Sarah? Hi. Um, I have been doing, yeah, I'm the, I'm the co-chair of SIG Security and have been doing a bunch of governance stuff. Um, I submitted a PR for what I think is the last chunk of our governance, which is a con contributor guide and code of conduct. So happy to have any feedback on that. Just wanted to leave it open for a little while for people to comment, chime in, um, and uh, just try to create some structure so that people who can't make the meetings know that they can chime in and you know participate asynchronously. And then um, met this morning with Santiago, and I think we have the last bit of the um, uh, the uh, security assessment for Intoto, where we sort of brainstormed a sort of a take at the maturity description, which has been very controversial. People, think, you know, like lots of people have different opinions. Nobody agrees with anything. So the idea is to just do something, write something down, do that five times, and then step back and be like, what's the norm here? So. Um, so, so anyhow, um, that we just need to do a final, uh, uh, there's like two open issues in the um, open comments in the write-up that Santiago is going to take care of. One of them is the, um, there was the template that they used, had like something that we didn't like. So anyhow, it's just like wrapping up little nits and then we're going to put it in the repo and then we'll have our first security review. Um, assessments so um so yeah sorry lots of words and um and then the rest of the stuff that i've been working on covered the agenda sorry i'm in a cafe, cafe so i'm gonna mute and mostly participate on chat got it um is there anyone else uh who uh you know not not jj uh i'm, gonna, I'm holding you intentionally jj uh to the last uh who's our our uh our third co-chair um, uh, is there anyone else who hasn't checked in uh, or hasn't been able to sign in? Um, hey folks, uh, it's Amar here. I'm, uh, I'm new, just, just tuning in for the first time. I'm just looking to, um, you know, I wanted to drop in and see what you guys were up to. Um, <clears throat> I like to work on uh, security uh, libraries. Like right now, I was just looking at the Intel project and, you know, seeing the wonderful work that's happening out there. I uh, just wanted to chime in and see if I could help with anything. Um, and yeah, um, new here. I'm glad to be here. Um, yeah, that's it. Great. Uh, so uh, I dropped into the chat uh, a link to our uh, meeting notes and uh, you know attendance doc. So um, you know when you have a moment, um, you know please uh, please check in there. Uh, I see uh, Mark Underwood. Hi everybody, it's Mark Underwood. I'm with Synchrony and the security innovation team. Actually a little team here. I'm also the involved in the IEEE DevOps security standard, which is in our uh, third year. So we're probably going to have a draft out this year for those some new people on this call so I'm mentioning this. And we're wrapping up the NIST Big Data Security release version 3, which happens later, probably August or September timeframe. Great to see all these people here. Sarah and Brandon, thank you so much for signing up for uh, scribe duty. Uh, I was uh, out of practice for meeting running and I, I forgot to debug everybody. I was uh, uh, with, with uh, you know, our, our attendance so high, I wanted to get everyone uh, checked in. Um, anybody else that uh, hasn't had a chance to check in? All right, I want to introduce our, um, our, our third chair, uh, JJ Jaya Pragash. And uh, uh, JJ, you know, I asked JJ to, to uh, you know, share a, a bit more uh, context about you know, SAFE and, and some of the work that we're doing. JJ, thank you. Thanks, Sharon. Yeah. This is JJ. Um, 
be ideated and uh, DJ, started. can you speak up a little? I think you're a little quiet. Can you hear me? Better. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, this is JJ. Um, the we ideated and created uh, the security working group, which was called Safe before, with uh, Dan and Sarah. It started around uh, KubeCon Austin, which is twenty. I forget year. <laughs> It's been too many years. So uh, we've been working on it. Seventeen. Yeah. Seventeen. Yeah. It's been we've been working on it for a for a while. There's a lot of uh, interesting contributions and participation that has happened uh, previously. So people who are joining in now, it'll be good for you to go like take a look at all the use cases from Cloud Foundry, all the uh, thinking about security from uh, folks at Google. So there is there's a bunch of content there that. Uh, I'd, I'd encourage you to go take a look. Um, but a brief brief history is, uh, yeah, this started out as like an effort. Uh, I was involved in Spiffy way before, and then uh, looking at Spiffy, which was a cross-cutting concern across all the infrastructure, then there is like a bunch of security concerns across all infrastructure, therefore. So there wasn't a common place where we could actually talk about address all these issues. And that was the primary motive with which we started this group and uh, uh, it was surprising to see like uh, the amount of people that were thinking about it the same way. Uh, so I can't claim the credit to be the first one to think. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but it's a honor to be here with uh, all the like-minded people to hash out a problem that probably is gonna not get solved in any of our generation, but at least it's a good start. What do you mean? This is the, the one good time where we, uh, you know, finally get security right. Exactly. <laughs> we had like 10 more attempts before, but. <laughs> yep. Uh, no, I'm, I'm happy. I'm glad. Oh, new internet. <laughs> uh, good. Now that's. That's roughly, I'll, I'm here to answer any questions that you have, uh, or I'll be available on Slack. So please be, feel free to ping any one of us. Yeah, so you know, beyond uh, Spiffy, Istio, um, and you know, very deep background in, uh, uh, in security, and uh, you know, kind of the, the primary leader for um, you know, our, our, our white paper efforts. Thank you, JJ. Thanks, Ed. Yeah. Okay, so um, a bit of an announcement as our first thing. Uh, Sarah, uh, are you still uh, online? Do you want to uh, talk to the, the microsite? Ask. Oh, yes. So, um, so we have a lot of, as JJ was saying, there's a lot of resources assembled. It's not, they're not surfaced super well in the repo, like it's, it's kind of a working, work in, the work in progress is mixed up with the history in ways that are not very transparent to newcomers. So the idea is to make a site with a static site generator, something like Hugo. And um, we have an issue that has, um, where Dan and I a while ago curated the presentations that seem like really useful to reflect back. And so I would love to have company of people who would be like, you know, I think picking a template takes more time than making the site sometimes. So if there are people who like, you don't have to like know Hugo or whatever, um, it's mostly like Markdown, YAML, looking at things and deciding some basics, site hierarchy. Like it's not super exciting work, but it is super important for um, people to be able to have visibility into what we do. So um, chime in on the issue or in the chat or, um, me up on Slack or whatever you want, or whatever is good. Um, we just want to have um, a couple of those. Right, and, and you know, o over the, over the the last oh three or four months, um, you know, we've we've definitely uh, you know ha had a huge uh, you know ramp up in uh, interest and participation. Uh, you know, we we've evolved from uh, you know Sarah, JJ, and I. 
uh, you know, uh, you know, being the the the, the co-chairs and, and uh, you know primary uh, conspirators to you know really having um, you know a, a series of, of of you know very active teams and ongoing uh, you know functions that you know from the security assessments uh, and and beyond. Um, so you know the, the, this will uh, be one of those those uh, areas that we, we can make things more accessible you know we're we're, we're uh, developers and technologists so uh you know interacting and participating through github is you know kind of uh, normal in our lingua franca um you know no problem there but you know as as you emanate out from you know the work that you that we're doing in um in, in open source uh you know the, the, the folks that aren't necessarily as uh, fluent with GitHub. So this is a great way, way, way to make the work that we're doing here uh, accessible and approachable to everyone. Is, um, I guess, you know, before we move on from that, um, you know, does anyone want to, uh, to pile on, or is that uh, a, a particularly interesting thing? Um, you know, we'll, we'll probably um, take that action item as a breakout activity, uh, and and not necessarily uh, you know drive that. We'll we'll, we'll um, you know bring updates into uh, an awareness and, and ratify things uh, through the the, uh, the SIG meetings. But uh, you know that'll be a, a breakout activity that we um, you know go iterate on, work work through together. Um, you know, out out of meeting time. I plan on uh, you know applying some some uh, um, some some resources to to that from from PayPal. So um, we'll kick that off, and uh, we'll uh, you know keep. Uh, I, I know we have a number of folks that this is your first meeting, so we don't uh, expect you to immediately uh, you know dive in. But uh, if you have any uh, background, or if there's anybody on uh, your team, you know a number. I I know um, I just had. Um, you know, three interns, uh, you know, start uh, on my team. So, you know, that's an opportunity uh, you know, potentially to, to engage there as well. Okay, so next up on, uh, on our agenda today, um, you know, Brendan's gone, gone through uh, our uh, issues and, you know, gone through uh, things in, in, in quite detail. Um, Brendan or, or, or maybe Sarah, uh, would you like to sort of you know, walk us through uh, any decisions that we want to make on, on this or um, what we want to accomplish? I'll give a little um, introduction first of all that um, those of you who haven't been reading, like we've had a very ex exciting Slack um, activity. So um, thanks everybody for chiming in, although I can understand it if somebody missed some of the details in there. Um, but uh, Brendan reached out a while ago and volunteered to help triage our issues because we had a lot of things that weren't closed. And so we actually made a little triage team. Howard, who um, focuses on policy and this time zone doesn't work for him, um, volunteered to triage the policy things and also write up issues for some of the things that um, the policy subgroup is working on. And, um, and Justin Capos, um, I volunteered him to triage the security assessment thing. So, um, so basically, we have a little triage team. We have a Slack um, a channel, which a couple of of people have joined. We have happy to link, um, join in. But the idea is basically to have to expand our bandwidth and make sure that our issues are like e easy to consume and and useful and categorize and you know like and we're keeping up with um, the enthusiasm um, and responding to things appropriately. So. Um, Brendan, I would love to invite you to um, tell us about what you discovered going through every issue in our GitHub repo and the um, proposed categorization. Yeah, all right, thanks, Sarah. Um, yeah, so I, I went through all, all the issues. Um, it was a pretty long list. I think we managed to bring it down from four pages to, to two pages. A lot of um, them were kind of like events and stuff like that. Um, but uh, the overall, I think most of the things fitted into kind of three different labels. So most of them were around 
on uh, assessment stuff, um, so assessment process and other process. Um, and then another, um, so this the assessment process stuff, there was the uh, white paper and the policy white paper stuff, uh, governance, and the last one is kind of around uh, the use case and personas. There were quite a few issues um, around use case and personas. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the other issues kind of didn't fall into any of the categories. So I, I have this, this link in, uh, well, I created a new issue, of course, <laughs> to document these issues. Um, so we have uh, this, uh, if you go to issue 194, um, basically there's a list of issues which don't seem to fall into any category. Um, but it seems like there are common themes that come up uh, which I, I think some of them we already do in some capacity, but not really formally. Uh, and some of them look like potential um, things that we could do or you know improve on. Um, so the couple of themes that came out was one on really education. Um, and I think this is, this is uh, addressed a lot by Sarah's um, um, call for this microsite to statically have to have all the static information available, um, to have maybe to formalize it and format it in a way that's easy easy to uh, retrieve, you know, have like um, uh, indexes, articles, things like that, like a blog maybe. Um, so there are a couple of things that fall into this category as well as uh, not only um, being able to retrieve these things um, easily, but also, you know, on certain security related topics. So. Uh, one that was suggested by by Justin Kapos was you know to have additional expertise on top tower bugs or crypto usage and stuff like that. Um, the other big ask also in um, the issues was for security recommendations. Um, this mainly stems on um, best practices for using um, cloud native technologies as well as a um, couple of them kind of hinting at compliance. Um, so I think that this exists in certain forms. So they exist in the white papers that are being written as well as, um, you know, issues here and there in the security assessments where we, we create, um, we have some recommendations on how to use technology, but it's kind of also, um, distributed in a way which is not easily accessible. Um, so I, I'm not sure what exactly we can do here. It seems like there are many use cases and many targets of this kind of information. So I don't know whether there's a really way that we can kind of synthesize that. Yeah, on, on that one, you know, I, I think the, um, you know, that need is one of the core mandates and one of the you know, objectives that we have uh, as, as a SIG. Uh, and, um, you know, the, the, the state of uh, the industry and, you know, our, our sort of coalesced uh, experience around that is, is still evolving. So, you know, uh, we, we keep that as, you know, one, one of our, our, our pole stars. Um, however, you know, we, we're, we're not the uh end all and, and be all source of truth so uh you know uh you know mark uh, underwood uh and you know the work that he's been doing with nist um you know keep keeping our, our pulse on the activity uh you know outside of this sig uh and and bring that to bear to uh, individuals who uh, participate here uh, is a great way to, you know, continue that effort. And, you know, if you're um, internally producing anything, uh, you know, we, we uh, you know, be happy to, to help you share that out and, um, and distribute that. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that's kind of where I, I think that lands, you know, there's a, there's a, uh, a shared understanding that that uh, there's that need, and um, you know we're we're working towards that, and as, as one of our key objectives. Yeah, so this this um, makes the microsite even more important as well. That's right. Uh, <laughs> no pressure. <yeah. laughs> also, yeah, well, I mean, like I'd say that like we're sort of starting with the 
things that are sort of we are really aligned with and are fairly obvious to us. It might not be obvious to people who are either new to cloud or new to um, security, right, in their role. And so um, we are, we're kind of starting with the non-controversial or things that we have made non-controversial through, through knowledge sharing over the last year and a half. And then um, as we get into things that maybe are being discovered, right, that we are, what we've talked about in the past is that we would be open to saying there are multiple ways that people are doing it these days. We're not seeking to really say we're going to pick the one top whatever, in, you know, but we want to be able to educate people about like, oh, but lots of people tried this and it wasn't a good idea, like might be a good thing to point out. Um, but, uh, but we're not seeking to, if there is contention, we're, um, we're not gonna focus on that initially. Rather, you know, we, we kind of, whenever there's a difference of opinion, we kind of seek more information and to try to refine what that is. And, um, and so we wanna have that be a kind of an ongoing process. So I think this is a good bucket to have, like I'm really glad you identified this, Brandon. And we may, like, as we get into the roadmap discussion, it may be, we kind of have that like bucket of security assessment improvements where we've decided, well, we're going to do five security assessments before we really dig into improving the process. So we just have this bucket for all these ideas and great, we can just keep collecting the ideas and then we have a point in time in the future when we reflect them. Right, exactly. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, you know, main, main reason I'm here and, you know, I, I know uh, Sarah and JJ, uh, when, when, when this uh, group was formed, uh, the, the need to uh, ensure that, uh, you know, as, uh, you know, cloud native was, was evolving, that, you know, security was a, a first class consideration and that we weren't leaving it, um, you know, uh, as an afterthought or, you know, almost just as bad, uh, you know, learning from the experience with, um, with oh now I'm blanking on the the, the platform. Um, the, um, the other cloud setup thing. OpenStack. Oh, OpenStack. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Uh, you know, one 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 of the um, limitations I, I think, and you know, some of the the experience that folks had with OpenStack was um that security was left as a vendor consideration uh which meant that uh interop and uh compatibility uh around security was you know basically limited and you know a little bit uh uh broken on the edges so you know uh, as we you know built this this iteration of how we all come together and, and build things you know we really wanted to to advocate for uh, you know, security and making sure that, uh, you know, the, the primitives that we're putting in place that uh, all of the uh, infrastructure of the internet is built on, uh, you know, has, uh, you know, security out of the gate and, and that we're, uh, you know, doing that hard work of, of uh, coming together and building consensus around the, the, the right approaches, you know, to, to maintain interop uh, and it and not just being uh, you know, oh, you know, your, your security vendor is going to, uh, you know, provide the bolt on for security. Brendan, did you, do, uh, I, sorry, I, you know, we, we deep dive into that one. Uh, any, anything else we want to go through on, uh, issue number 194? Yeah. So I think the only last thing is, um, on the, the large cluster of other issues that I found was really around discussions of different topics, whether this is getting feedback on certain, technologies, you know, discussions that people want to have on topics of like identity and so on. And I think one of the, the big um, issues I see here is that um, I think a lot of these issues don't get seen by the larger majority of the group unless you're watching the entire Git repository. Um, so I'm not sure whether we could kind of create I don't know what would be the best medium, but something like maybe a mailing list or something where people can put, um, you know, a tracking mailing list that we can create where people can talk about topics. I don't know whether that may um, make these topics more, um, well, more visible, this discussion more visible. Yeah. Right. Yeah, um, that and, and or um, 
Slack. I don't, I don't know if we have the ability to, uh, to uh, like auto post things to, um, to the CNCF Slack. Uh, yeah, we, we, so we could have a, that might be like, I, I you know, like we could not have on the triage just have a GitHub integration. So we see every thing that comes in. I find that nice, but not, maybe not in the main channel, right? Because it can get like, a sure. Um, so we can put that in the triage channel, invite anybody to join it, and just have a smaller group that's actually assigning the labels so that we nice. kind of get a handle on, like, what the heck are we doing, and we have clear people who are responsible for areas. But then more discussion, if, you know, if we're like, hey, can somebody look at this? Um, I do want to be a little cautious that we don't splinter our attention, because there are, many of us are interested in many of the things, right? And um, most people can't spend enough time every week to watch every issue, and it, there's value in having a group. So, so just to just to clarify, uh, um, so um, the 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 specific issues that I was looking at were kind of like um, uh, someone says, "Oh, I'm looking for a discussion forum for this particular topic." Um, so they want to get feedback or like open the discussion on what do you guys think about X. Um, and the thing is, I think a lot of people are not seeing the issues. So I'm not saying that like, all issues right. should be shared with everyone, but I feel like if the intention is that I want to have a discussion around um, with the greater community, not so much just from the sick perspective, then um, maybe that I'm not sure whether we want to create a different avenue for that. Yeah, but, I think we, we could also have like if there's an urgency to like attending to that topic for a member, I think we could like have either a mailing list thread or um, a breakout session that somebody could say like, I need this problem solved in my life with somebody, you know, like we, if we, if our meeting agendas are busy. Yeah, then, then we also up. Yeah. Then we don't, we don't, like, like you said, we don't have too many things going on as well. Yeah, um, yeah and some, some of those topics are, um, you know, due date back a little bit and, you know, we, we, we may want to sort of you know go no go on you know do we keep it open and kind of go through a a, a tree a, a deeper triage of some of those things and just identify like maybe the discussion topic um didn't get engagement because there isn't you know consensus or ready answers to that in the industry yet or you know at least we're not not aware of that yeah so so what i'm gonna do um is i'm gonna um, probably add these three labels, which kind of have a large cluster of things. Um, and then I will probably put a flag for maybe another 30 to 60 days. If there's no activity, I'll probably just close it. Yeah, yeah and that's, that's pretty much it from the tree edge point. Awesome. Great work, Mike. Yay, thank you. Okay, so next on the agenda is uh, security day. Sarah, do you want to uh, uh, kick that off? Can you all hear me? Now I'm on. Cystic has generously, um, actually, do we have somebody from Cystic here who can talk about it so that we don't have the noisy cafe? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, Michael. Um, so one thing that we wanted to try and do is kind of unite the security community. I feel like um, it's kind of bifurcated uh, among, um, at least from like a software perspective, it's bifurcated across a couple different proprietary vendors um, and then some open source vendors or open core vendors. Um, but the last KubeCon, what happened was, is all these security vendors went and did their own thing. And so there was no kind of community event where the community could actually come together and have conversations about security and it not be focused on, you know, one particular vendor's opinion of security. Um, the storage um, group, uh, and I don't know if this was run through SIG storage, but the secure, the, there was a cloud native storage day, which was, you know, vendor agnostic and everyone could come together and, and talk about, you know, solving persistent volume problems uh uh in kubernetes and in cloud native platforms and that seemed to be fairly successful so we wanted to try and emulate something uh where we would have a six security day 
the day before KubeCon. Um, KubeCon does all these things of like add-on events um, that people can add to their registration. They can either be free of charge or they can be something that, you know, a nominal fee like $100 or something like that, uh, just to kind of recover some of the costs. And Michael, when you're referring to you know the last KubeCon, you're not referring to Barcelona. You're referring to the last uh, iteration I'm referring of North to America. Barcelona, actually. Oh, yeah. You are? Okay. Yeah. Well, it, it kind of happened at. Um, yeah, Seattle as well. They were it kind of happened right. in Seattle as well. Yeah. Yep. I remember yeah. that. But um, you know, for instance, in Barcelona, there was a, a Twistlock event. There was an Aqua event. Got it. Uh, we were doing our own thing but we kind of focus more on like cloud native transformation and like the organizational changes you need to have mm -hmm. so we weren't necessarily security focused right. um, but I, I just feel like if we had a, I feel like the end user community is really desiring some real practical guidance around mm -hmm. security mm -hmm. um, and doesn't help the end user community to have this kind of these bifurcated communities mm -hmm. where, you know, vendors are pushing their opinion versus mm -hmm. us coming together and giving practical advice. And yes, you might need to use choose vendors as part of that, right. but that's at your discretion. You still need to follow this practical advice. And so I think the SIG security day could help kind of lay that groundwork. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I like that. Um, you know, Sarah, or I think Sarah uh, has been taking the actions, uh, coordinating with the CNCF team on uh, keynote. Uh, we we're angling for a keynote uh, session. Um, so that, this is unrelated to that. So let's right, right, sure, sure. Right. hold that. Okay. We are, <laughs> we are um, talking about that. We want right. to make, you know, we want to make sure that we have delivered the stuff that we are queuing up and that we have stuff to talk about that's like stuff we've done. Which I think we're, doing yes. a good, we're on our way with the security assessments and we get to, you know, surface the stuff that we're doing that people can see, then, you know, it starts to have a right thing. But like, I want to have the, the roadmap. So we go, hey, CNCF, we're, we're going along this path and this is what we will have done. And then we want a little time in your keynote. And I think that everybody's warm to the idea. Mm -hmm. um, this is just like a completely different thing, sure. Um, sure. but along the lines of communicating that like uh, CNCF cares about security and it's not a vendor specific thing. And so um, I talked to a few people about this idea. So I found officially there are these co-located events mm -hmm. that um, are generally vendor events, even if they okay. don't sound there. Um, and I'm still trying to figure out um, some of them aren't. Anyhow. Okay. But um, due to, uh, you know, since Cystic volunteered, we sort of like are able to um, sort of pilot having a SIG day without necessarily worrying about it being for every SIG, because um, mm -hmm. that can slow things down. But this is the week that they are, that they're like the platinum and gold sponsors are signing up for their okay. spot. And so it's a good, I wanted to make sure that this is something that SIG wants to do and like to have a rough idea of the format and then, um, and see if we have a couple of volunteers to, to figure out what the day would be. Um, and then, and then we can sort of like with Cystic's help go forth and you know, get them yeah, together just, to, to coordinate it. Yeah, we would help with kind of the coordination with the Linux uh, um, Foundation people. What we would need the six security people to do is focus on building the agenda, getting people in to submit to the CFP, opening the CFP, mm -hmm. all of those sorts of things. Um, and we would we would be totally like from a cystic like my role in six security, I would be willing to help out with that. But just so you know, cystic would be kind of removed from that. We would help with budget and anything around those lines that we would need to. But beyond that, I want it to be like six security driven as far as agenda sure. and all of those sorts of things. Yeah, Sousa's Sus in the same position. You know, we've, we've talked both about starting to work with um, Sysdig, but looking for more opportunities with SIG security. And I think this is one, um, again, with, you know, supply and labor, but being vendor, you know, not coming to it from a vendor perspective, but a SIG perspective. Right. We're uh, interesting and we're interested in working on it too. 
Right on. You know, one, one of the things that I was poking at, you know, since uh, a lot of those sessions are vendor driven um, is, um, you know, basically, do we need to, to you know, pony up uh, money to secure uh, space and, and venue or, um, I think, you know, so I, think let, let's, I think we're good on that, right? Okay. Okay. Like the, but the primary thing for the net last 10 minutes of this meeting is what do people want this day to be? And I think we want to be cognizant. Basically, I did a little fact finding, and there are a set of people who are way oversubscribed on the Monday. Like, if you are a Kubernetes core contributor, right you are at that day. Like, you're meeting with two contributors that you don't see right? So, there's a, there's a day of the core contributors to Kubernetes all getting together, right? There's also like you know, and, and so there are competing things. So there are certain mm -hmm. people who are completely unavailable on Monday, right? Including our TOC of the EA's office. They're, they're oversubscribed. And so, but there's, I think, in my experience, there's a lot of people who are concerned about security who are like, yeah, which of these Monday things am I going to pick? None of them are really exciting. Right? Mm -hmm. So um, so I think we, there's an opportunity for the special interest group on security, like to pull in people who are you know curious or interested or worried about security and provide some a forum for something and so i'd love to hear from people who've been in the group for a while or you know people who haven't spoken in the last few minutes to chime in on ideas or what you'd like to see happen i'd love to get um some kind of general like overview slash threat model slash goals and stuff like this for different projects in the uh, security space. Sort of, when you look at the, the assessment process, that's supposed to be a longer document that gives somebody all the context they need to evaluate, is this the right sort of thing for me to use? And having a whole bunch of, you know, 20 minute versions of that for all the security relevant, security first, CNCF projects, as well as a few of the vendor projects, if we can keep this without turning into a marketing thing, I think would be helpful. Right. Any other suggestions or, um, you know, there are a lot of vendors here present, uh, you know, any sort of uh, opportunities to uh, specifically step out of the the vendor context to you know build more clarity around uh, you know the, the context of security as we're still you know working towards that that uh, um, you know shared ob objective of you know having um, you know greater understanding for for the industry yeah yeah it would be better if we can create just uh, use cases where we can embed the security on top of that instead of trying to pick uh, well tools or security tools that help us to enrich the uh, security on the project it would be better if we can just take a couple of end-to-end uh, -end use cases uh, that the industry is implementing on the uh, yeah on, on the industry in order to see how can we the pick and put on top of that uh, our best no method to enhance security on that particular use cases so that is pretty much the idea right now that comes to my mind. Yeah, that sounds pretty neat. Yeah, and I think there probably there could be the opportunity where we could get enough, um, like real world examples of yeah. uh, where it's mature enough to where there's enough deployments where you could actually you know start mm -hmm. to have these real world stories. Yeah, people typically like listening to use cases of how, you know, how someone else does it. So that could be like, if this is kind of like a conference uh, day before, before KubeCon, you know, people really like use cases. So like having end users present. So that's like really good. Um, there's also a bunch of things that, uh, you know, we've done in the working group uh, that can, you know, potentially become a session. And there's also a bunch of uh, features in Kubernetes that, you know, like we talk about our back, but there's a lot of folks in my experience that don't know how RBAC even works or like what that is. And right. so it like we have a wide range of folks kind of coming into it. And I feel like the actual practitioners that do Kubernetes and cloud native stuff are developers. And uh, you know, they don't know about a lot of the things in the security world. So you almost have to go from, you know, people are taking their, you know, for maybe not their first step, but their second step to all the way to 
um, you know, how we're actually like doing things uh, in, in, you know, in the working group. I like that a lot. Another totally different idea that I had, and I don't know whether anybody's interested in it, is like we could have like a hack day where you like build, like we're like, I'm going to try these security products when the, in, like the maintainers are around or somebody yeah. from the project right. is familiar with it. That's a really yeah, good like idea. Or, or even further doing a capture the flag. Yeah, that'd be, awesome. <laughs> that'd be really fun, right? If you, yeah. if you want to do a capture the flag, I'm going to raise some money for that. <laughs> I love that. Well, you'll have to, um, you know, you can contribute to the Netflix pool for that, which they're effectively setting up with their configurations with that. So, yeah. Can I quickly chime in from a user's perspective? Please. Uh, because at uh, KubeCon, not the core, not only the core com, uh, contributors are uh, oversubscribed. Um, users trying to find out what's new in the space are oversubscribed as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't had a chance to see the talks, uh, even a fraction of what I wanted to see. Um, and what I l miss the most at the, the scale that KubeCon has reached is this um, listening in on people talking in the hallways about topics that I'm interested in. So I'd, I'd be very grateful for um, a security day, security piece of hallway, if you like, um, where I can, uh, especially yes. what Justin just mentioned with uh, threat modeling. And um, I have no, I have many hats on, and I, I, mm -hmm. I'm part of a um, platform team that actually runs the cluster, and I'm the one that has, the, uh, in addition, the security hat. So um, what I desperately need is a, is a feel for where the threats are and, and what people have looked at, what, um, what general approaches I can take in addition to what, I've, or what we've been doing. Um, and just listening to people discussing um, perceived threats, things in, in, um, in, in pure research, um, even if they, they don't apply to specific uh, pieces of, of the puzzle yet, uh, for me to give a, to get an idea what 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 I have to look at and what I have to read up on and what I have to focus on um, so year after that, year after year. One of the things they did at DockerCon last year was um, they had hallway tracks set up that you could sponsor a hallway track, meaning you had a topic that you wanted to talk to other people about and anybody can like sign up and come and just listen or contribute. Or if you had a question that you wanted to ask, some of them had doc Docker captains that were like, hosting them and running it. Some of it was just, here's a whole bunch of information. Other cases, it was like question and answer. Um, that's how uh, I, I, that's how I talked to Michael um, from Netflix about their bug bounty that they were trying to get set up to see who would be interested in donating to that and see if there was any community interest in it. That started from a hallway track. So nice. I don't know if that's something that would be beneficial, maybe to recommend to CNCF in the future, mm -hmm. um, is mm -hmm. something like that up. Uh, yeah. I can second that. Um, I was in Docker DockerCon last year, and uh, I found it more uh, enriching uh, than uh, most of the presentations. Just discussing nice. with people. Would would, would um, you know, since I wasn't there, um, would that be something that, in addition to you know the conference sessions? Would we kind of have have an area where you know we would continue uh, meeting if you're 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 interested in in our space? You know, continue throughout the event. Or would that only be in you know so the the, the pre event day? They had it throughout DockerCon when I was there. It was any nice. day that there was a conference going on, the hallway That's track hallway. was open for a certain couple of hours, and mm -hmm. you sign up for a particular time slot. And they, now they only had so many areas for you to sit, so mm -hmm. often it got booked up. But some areas were fairly large, some of them were a little bit smaller, more intimate. But it certainly allowed me going there talking to industry finding out what their security concerns are some of the security problems that they're running into with their docker deployments swarm kubernetes cloud native whatever it is that they're doing yeah having it throughout the whole period makes scheduling much easier because otherwise you get a sort of compression thing mm -hmm. um so so i think it definitely helps to have something like that I mean, it sound, sounds like there's an opportunity to have this be uh, both and, right? You know, have have the dedicated day, uh, and then um, you know, continue to have a um, 
a space that we we all come back to throughout the event. Um, you know, I, I like that a lot. Yeah, um, that might be good for just. Sir, a I think you're 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 talking, but you're on mute. I just wanted to say, like, let's keep like, well, let's follow them up as two separate things, right? Because the cool. logistics yeah. of something at the conference and the day before are going to be completely different. And then if we manage to have them both, then we can connect them. Um, but I can also follow. I'll find out where the open space thing is possible. So it sounds like, generally speaking, there's enough interest to kind of continue to go forward with the research around executing on the six security day. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. The Aqua Security um, CubeSec day that they had before the conference was good, and wow. and a lot of the talks and the Container wow. Security Summit in February was also good. There were a lot of people that showed up for that one. So that. I would argue that there's enough interest in the community to definitely put together a security cloud native day. Do we have a volunteer who wants to take the, to corral the, to do the cat herding and take the lead on the agenda? I think agenda is probably going to be, I mean, if you're doing it right, then we'd have to probably have like somewhat of a program committee, open submission and curate the agenda. So, well, I think there's been a lot of ideas. Yeah. And somebody, I would love to have somebody who is not JJ, Dan, or I to take the lead on presenting that back to the group and calling a group of like minds and, you know, like somebody to spearhead that committee. I can happily take it since I proposed it. I, I just don't, I just wouldn't be clear that there won't be a conflict of interest with Sysdig or anything. That's all. Okay. I'm um, I'm happy to help Michael out. Okay. To keep him honest, and <laughs> I keep you on. I, I can help you, Mike, if you need some ideas. Okay. Yeah, me, me too. If you uh, need my help, just uh, contact me, or we can put another session in order to discuss the agenda. It sounds interesting. Right. At least so, Michael Tusi, right? will you make a um, GitHub issue for this? I will. Follow our process. Yes. And I could be the co-chair sponsor, or whatever we called it. Okay. <laughs> All um, right. I've got to. I've got to drop. Uh, Sarah, do, do you want to uh, wrap us up, or is, are we going uh, to close on that note? Like, cool. we'll have another working session, and we'll keep talking about all the things. Um, Wonderful. So yeah. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Great to see everybody, and uh, we'll see you next week. Same time, same channel. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye. Bye.